Okay, welcome to networking session for students and emerging scholars. Um, I want to see how many we are uh, at this point of time. Yeah. So, Paulina, um, are yes. you able to see the number is growing? Eight. Eh? Anyway, eight now. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, great. Then probably if we give them one minute to join, sometimes yeah, they need one minute to join. Okay. Yeah, there is Rachel, Barbara, Amanda. I see you are twice. <laughs> oh yeah, because I I open also the um, virtual what is called that the feed the loop, feed loop yeah. and uh, Zoom. So. Just be sure um, that one of the microphones is off. off if yeah. not, we are going to have the feedback. So there is no echo at this point, huh? Okay. No, it is not. We don't have that. Good. Um, so Bina, we are having actually yeah, uh, quite good numbers. So good. Um, should we start? Sure. Oh. Bruno. Hi, Bruno. Hi, Bruno. You're muted, Bruno, sorry. Uh, sorry, Hello, I was saying everyone. hi to everyone, sorry. <laughs> so. Hello. So I, I'm not sure I'm an emerging scholar. <laughs> I'm an old scholar. It's for all, we need, we need your inputs as an established scholar. So we need you. Uh, so. Oh my God. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hello. Yes. Nice to see you. And as the, I know you're in Winnipeg and we never see each other. And with COVID. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to uh, uh, figure out a way to, uh, to connect. Yeah, I'm actually yeah. looking forward. Yeah. So I was trying to send an email, but anyway, we'll talk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we will. We'll, we'll talk. <laughs> I know. See, even in the same city, uh, sometimes uh, we're restricted in, in terms of. Uh, in terms of being able to uh, to get together, and I know our universities, uh, we are sixty percent online and forty percent in person, mm -hmm. and uh, so we haven't uh, completely moved back to uh, to in person. And I think U of M is even less; it's mostly online uh, teaching, and uh, and not uh, and not uh, in uh, in person. So I don't know what it, it's like in some other universities across Canada. Okay, I think we should start. Bina, should we sure. start? Um, okay. Sure. So welcome um, to all of you uh, who are joining uh, this networking session. Um, although it is intended, intended for students and emerging scholars, but we are having established scholars, including our uh, guest uh, speaker uh, for this session, Dr. Vina Di Costa. Um, Dr. Vina Di Costa. Um, I think it's echoing for what? I don't know. Yeah, maybe. So first, I would like to do uh, do a, a land acknowledgement. Uh, I know uh, all of us are located in different locations, but I'm just mentioning my. I'm from Winnipeg. Um, located in Treaty 1 territory, the territories of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Dakota, Dean, Metis, and Ojibwe nations. Uh, so uh, we are just like acknowledging um, as a part of the journey for reconciliation. Uh, so first, I would like to introduce myself. Um, just I am a. Uh, I just recently completed my PhD. Uh, uh, and and I'm currently teaching part time um, <clears throat> at, at the University of Winnipeg in Manitoba, um, and 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 I'm actually serving uh, on the board of CARFEMS uh, since 2016. Actually, when uh, Stephanie started, uh, I'll actually convened the uh, conference in Winnipeg that that time. Yeah, since that time. Yeah. Um, now I would like to um, introduce. Um, uh, our guest speaker here, uh, uh, Dr. Bina Di Costa. Um, Bina is professor of international relations in the Coral Bell School. 
Australian National University and an Australian Research Council Future Fellow. At the height of Europe's refugee emergency, she moved to UNICEF's Office of Research in Northern as a senior migration and displacement uh, specialist to build its global migration and displacement program 2016-2018. She led and supervised research in the Horn of Africa, Jer Jordan, Lebanon, European Union responses to European refugee crisis and the Rohingya emergency. She has served as the migration lead in UNICEF's Rohingya emergency response in Cox's Bajar, Bangladesh. She, she served as the Associate Dean, IDEA Inclusion, Diversity, Equity and Access, and prior to that, Coral Bell School's Deputy Director, Education. Bina's research interests span migration and forced displacement, children and global protection systems, gender-based violence in conflicts, and human rights and impunity. She has undertaken studies on refugees, stateless communities, and IDPs, and has provided inputs and technical advice to human rights bodies, United Nations agencies and NGOs. She is the author of seven books, including Nation Building, Gender and War Crimes in South Asia, Cascades of Violence, co-authored with um, John uh, Braithwaite, 2018, and Children and Violence in South Asia, 2016. Bina's current research focuses on children's and young people's protection in global humanitarian emergencies, through human rights framing in trafficking uh, uh, slash smuggling, child slash early marriage, exploitative child labor and sexual abuse. This project draws on sustainable development goals indicators for data and evidence. This research initiative has received generous seed funding from the Australian National University Strategic Partnership Schemes Scheme and APIP Global Collaboration Scheme. Thank you, Abina, for uh, giving us uh, consent to be part of this uh, networking um, session. Thanks so, so much, Aziz, for the detail. Uh, oh, to, uh, actually, I followed the uh, 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 follow, followed the uh, okay <laughs> uh, description from yeah. Thank you um, for getting okay. there. Um, so now uh, we will spend few minutes um, uh, actually to locate uh, ourselves. But basically, here first I would uh, ask some questions to um, uh, Dr. Bina Di Costa uh, as an established scholar and uh, to share her experience with networking, uh, uh, especially in relation to research, advocacy for policy making and practices. Um, so we'll, let's, let's hear her. Um, so my first question would be, what do you mean by networking, um, uh, Dr. Bina? Yeah, please. Thank you, Aziz, and hello, everyone, for uh, joining us today. Um, I hope we also um, get to hear uh, from you all about your experiences. Bruno is here, and I know others also have uh, your very rich experiences from elsewhere. What do we mean by networking? And we all know that we do different kinds of networking um, throughout our um life even um, because I now work on child protection a lot. I know children have to have that kind of, so networking to me in that way from child protection work is uh, building safe spaces and building communities uh, where we support each other, where we hold each other's hands, where um, uh, we collaborate in different ways and we share our knowledge. So from our, uh, throughout our life, uh, in our profession, we do different kinds of networking. And um, over the last uh, 20 to 25 years in my life in academia, um, I also see that um, networking um, at the moment from when I started um, as an early career academic, or even uh, when I was a graduate student from that time on, now it has changed significantly. It's such an important part of uh, academic life. So I was looking at um, some of the ways how networking in academia are framed. Uh, and um, from literature, it seems that there are four things and all of those you will recognize from your own practice as well, that how it improves our scholarship when we are 
contributing to knowledge by sharing with others, by sharpening our ideas, by conducting not only literature review and reading journal articles, but also connecting with other researchers in our field. So that's number one. Then the second one is that how uh, our research uh, shouldn't, and this is where networking as a responsibility is also projected, that how our research shouldn't be just for our own personal gain, but it is also to build that scholarship and the, and the field. So we have a duty to actually also share our work in conferences. We have to publish journal articles and, uh, and also connect with others. So here we can talk a little bit about citation and citational politics and gatekeeping and all of the, those as well in terms of that. Third point in terms of networking, um, and this is very relevant to people. Um, it's, it was relevant at least a decade ago uh, for primarily Global South scholars or for scholars who were moving from uh, other sectors to academia. But now it's very, very relevant for all of them because as you all know, academic job market is so difficult to get into anywhere, uh, particularly in Global North um, institutions. So in terms of that, there's also increasing kind of expectation of collaboration in research, both with our academic partners and our research partners. And when we are also applying for grants um, and all those projects where we are connecting, there's always this expectation that will be visible. So networking gives us a visibility that through collaboration we also create as well. So it's also a uh, part of our, how we build our, if you like from Australian Research Council kind of um, uh, jargon, building a track record. And finally, uh, um, one point which is often overlooked, it's that our life, academic life, particularly for uh, those of you, I don't know if anyone is doing a graduate uh, study still, it could be lonely. So networking um, allows us to have connection. Uh, and in this pandemic time, it is extremely important to have those. So I think these are my take from various kinds of networking um, uh, practices and why it's important. Uh, very briefly, the other thing I want to mention is that um, I, um, I was born in South Asia. Um, I moved from there to the United States to do my studies. Then I worked with the Department of UN Department of Peacekeeping uh, in DRC and New York. From there, I went back to academia. And from after an academic job, postdocs, I've uh, again gone back to the UN. Then I have moved back to academia. Then I've gone back to the UN. And then I have actually now returned to academia which means that doing different sector kind of work, it actually um, offered me a very unique kind of lens, I think. But I also had to constantly prove in academic world that how these kind of publications and many of you who are doing forced migration work, you would know that drawing from practice, draw, drawing from on the ground work is very, very relevant to research. So for that, networking had been incredibly important. Over to you, Aziz. Thank you so much. So my next question um, uh, would be, um, what struggles um, you encountered in, in your early career uh, building specifically, uh, if you can? Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, I have actually written about that in methodology, uh, in several articles on methodology. Um, in terms of also feminist methodology in international relations, how actually using that and how uh, drawing from the lens of gender critical feminist theory and also marginalized states, how that sometimes hadn't been very relevant, particularly in the United States, where international relations have been very quantitative and focused on primarily important states that have been strategically relevant. Uh, to global politics. So I talked about that, that some of us who are at the margins of the um, of uh, academic research, if you like, how we had to constantly really prove that how uh, relevant our work is in mainstream 
international relations. Now, this is very specific to international relations. It doesn't have to be for others the same way you think about it, but it took me a long time over time to really have enough confidence to say that I have something important to say. It may not be something uh, that you automatically um, accept or understand from the disciplinary lens, but this is also important. So that when I started doing PhD, when I was starting, uh, started to, when I started to write about uh, particularly sexual violence and rape and looking at tribunals, international crimes, um, tribunals of Rwanda and uh, ICTY, and then specific tribunals. But I think that time, my challenge is very different now because margins in most disciplines, including international relations, are really important, powerful places to have conversations now. So the way I talked about margins a decade ago and the way margins are now in different disciplines and in cross-disciplinary way is very different. Feminist scholars have important voices. Global South scholars also have important voices. So what I see the challenge now is intersectional knowledge building work that there are different kinds of citational politics, gatekeeping issues, and also how we think what is relevant and not. I think that's very important to think about. Uh, and the other challenge of course had been publications, really. Learning from senior colleagues where to publish, how to publish, how to do book proposals. These are simple things and I, I hope some of you are offered more guidance than I had before. And now we are very aware of it. Now we have very specific kind of mentoring spaces where we talk about those things. But when I started, we didn't have those. Uh, so it had been actually, those are, were some of the challenges uh, I encountered. Thank you so much. Okay, so next uh, is, would you please share uh, some of the rewards of being able to network in your journey? Yes. Now, networking also, um, I think one thing before uh, I talk about the rewards is that networking uh, really requires a lot of time, our energy. We have to invest, which requires a lot of emotional labor. And I say it with a lot of care and sensitivity to all of you, because I know in lockdown and when you're not able to connect with each other, it is different. So you have to find, I guess, innovative spaces to do different kind of networking. And that's not always possible. Life is happening beyond academia. So uh, even saying that, I think the rewards have been, I've always found that those I have networked with, we have created trust, we've built trust with each other. So that helped. Uh, starting, uh, just having some break in academia. For example, um, submitting a, a journal article in a special issue when, you know, when I'm submitting something independently, which is taking over more than a year to be published. So that really helped. Submitting something in edited volume, which I probably no longer do at this moment, but I used to before, and that helped. Then in being invited in workshops as an early career academic, working with senior academics, learning from them, being mentored by them, and so create, having those kinds of friendship with them. So those were definitely important rewards that I'm carrying with me over, for all the time. And I've learned so much. I've been able to open up my vulnerabilities sometimes to um, those who through networking became friends. And I've also managed to uh, offer my support to others who needed it. So creating a community. So networking is just not, if we only use it just to think, oh, I'll get jobs from it or I'll get publications from it, it's not going to work. It has to be a space where you, we are all equally responsible for each other. And that kind of network I have managed to um, have and it had been nurturing and uh, I've learned a lot from it. Thank you. I think you have covered a lot, but uh, maybe the last question would be, if you want to add in terms of 
some of the success factors for you as an established scholar uh, in, in, in relation to networking, yeah. Uh, success factor in relation to networking. Yeah. So one success factor had been with senior scholars doing networking, uh, first of all, references, job references. Now, mind you, um, nowadays, a lot of time, uh, I was recently writing a reference for somebody and I was pleasantly surprised. It said that do not write negative things. If you do, we have a responsibility to tell the um, uh, tell the applicant. I think that's wonderful practice, but references, uh, how actually senior scholars uh, even write references, there's also gender differences that how actually a woman um, who is a female academic about whom others are writing, plus if you're a female academic, English is your, in my case, my third language, that how you are speaking about that. And so all of those also create a lot of kind of ways, you know, um, hierarchy in terms of that. So I think um, I um, had a community of senior scholars through networking who were always my allies, uh, senior allies and my mentors. They helped to read my CV. I have um, shared with them and uh, my CV and they have helped me. And they were great in being my champion, you know, when I was applying for jobs. So creating those champions. Then also the second bit of um, the reward have been, um, again, learning from them how to write in very particular way, but also how to find my voice. It took a long time to find my voice, that what I wanted to say. Um, and uh, I think there, finding, you know, through those kinds of um, various kinds of crevices of insecurity and being overconfident and all of those, through all of those things. And that I learned also, that that had been another reward. Finally, I am not somebody who had always been in academia. I'm an, uh, I consider myself an activist scholar. Uh, my life had been seeped in street level activism from there. Uh, I worked with NGOs through their learning and working with agencies and academia. So this, how to think about advocacy and activism and how to use that in academic language, write about that, that had been one of the biggest rewards of networking with uh, human rights activists, with um, NGOs and other practitioners at the UN level and academics who are traveling in other worlds in that way. Uh, so all of that have been very, very important. And through them, I've also learned that it's actually also, you know how we all have to go through IRB processes and have to do our ethics protocol, but networking, that's also, and it tells us how to use ethical lens and building from that our research community. So that had been a reward. Okay, uh, thank you so much for sharing your valuable experiences and insights uh, in terms of uh, networking. But now, before we open the floor um, to the whole group, uh, uh, I think I, I, I have actually, uh, I, I wanna locate myself, but I don't wanna uh, spend time, in, uh, rather we, we go to the colleagues attending the session. Um, and I, now I, we can do a quick round of introductions <laughs> Uh, and I'm wondering, we are now uh, 13, uh, so um, if we do breakout, or maybe before we do breakout, just let's do a quick uh, round of introductions. You will say just your name, and then one experience uh, with networking in, in any, just one experience. It's just, we don't want like description here, uh, at this level, uh, just the experience um, um, uh, in, couple of words. Thank you. So who wants to start? Um, eh, from any, yeah, just like raise hand and start uh, sharing your name and one experience with networking uh, in a couple of words, actually. Yes, please. Okay, thank you, Aziz. And thank you very much, Bina, for uh, this great, you know, overview of networking. I totally agree with you. Um, so an experience of networking is car firms. Sorry, it's, it looks like a commercial for firms. Thank you. Okay, next, please. Oh, but really, I mean, you hate. Okay, so sorry, sorry. You're done. 
sorry, I, 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 I got it. Yeah, no, sorry. I just wanted to say that for me who hates uh, networking, uh, being with car firms is like networking without networking. So that's right. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, who is next, please? Uh, I can go next. Um, please, please. Yeah, well, thank you all. Um, networking is this, getting in touch with, uh, with people, right? And you never know. I mean, from previous webinars or seminars, whatever you want to call it, I already have three contacts on my email list to get in touch with uh, people that you, by casual conversation, you get, you bond over same interests in research. And that's how the relationship starts. I don't actually seek that on purpose, like, you know, checking universities or departments and say, hey, my name is Walter, I'm doing this. Uh, doesn't work for me, it doesn't work like that way. And also to find the right advisor, how important it is to have an advisor that actually understands your research or where you want to go or even better because I change my field of I know that as is you asked for two words sorry but I used to be a broadcaster so I can't oh, right. it's just an introduction uh, so yeah, yeah and had, also uh, you, because sorry. the great advisor knows or knows you best and how to direct you that's why I changed my field of studies thank you so please next. Hi, I can go next. Uh, my name is Stephanie Stoby, uh, and I said networking is so uh, so important. And uh, when you're attending uh, conferences, uh, being able to go for coffee or dinners with uh, some of your colleagues and and friends, and uh, being able to discuss some of the topics that have been. Uh, uh, talked about in the sessions and so you're able to continue those kinds of discussions maybe in more depth uh, because uh, at the conference at those sessions uh, you just have a very few minutes to uh, to really ask your questions but if you're going out with people you can ask those questions again and get further information and so I have found that really helpful in terms of networking thank, thank you. you so who's next yeah Can go. Yes, please. Yes. Uh, so I'm Amanda Clausen. I'm a PhD student at Carleton University, and um, I think you know conferences are great for networking. Um, while I was doing my masters, um, they actually made um, a point of bringing us all to Ottawa. Um, I was doing a policy masters, and they made a point of bringing us all to Ottawa um, and networking with uh, past students who had. Um, who had uh, gone through the program and were working in the government or other nonprofit sector or whatever. And it was a really great um, kind of opportunity. So um, I think when the institution really makes a point of, of networking with students is, is really great. Um, so that's kind of my big, my big experience. Thank you. Next, please. I can go. So I'm also a PhD student at Carleton. Um, Amanda and I work together on some things, but um, one of the networking opportunities that I have is I'm working at for, I guess as a research assistant, but um, for an international research project called the Local Engagement Refugee Research Network or LEARN. And Amanda also works with this project, but just being involved with this um, project and having a role with it has um, allowed me to connect with all kinds of people from many different countries. And um, even though my role is only one part of the project, I get to see kind of what everyone else is doing and um, how they are, um, yeah, all the cool things that other people are doing, whether they're, some of them are um, academics, but they're also students and um, practitioners and others. Okay, thank you. We have three more to share, uh, just name and um, one experience with networking. Okay, so next, please. I can go next. Um, yes. I ag completely agree with Walter. Supervisors are super important. And it's not because Bruno is here and B Bruno is my supervisor. It's not that I'm, I'm not saying this just because he's here. <laughs> but I have to say that I learned about the importance of networking in academia because of Bruno. Before that, uh, all the experiences that I had were more networking. Um, from um, NGOs side or my activist, I'm also an activist. So I thank you so much, Pina, for 
what, what you said, because I also felt like I have been in different parts and that gives me hope. Just <laughs> listening to you gives me hope I'm not that bad. I always felt that I, I started in the academia super late and that I have no hope. So um, uh, thank you for that. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so we, I think we got uh, four more, yeah. Can you please uh, wanna say something, uh, Barbara? Okay. Is there anybody wants to say your name and one experience with networking? Just few words, a few words. Jody, Jody? Stephanie, uh, is Stephanie and yeah, Michelle. Oh, I think, yeah, maybe. Okay, so, okay, great. Um, now, actually, it's, uh, it's time to, uh, as we are having still, I think we, we don't need to have a breakout room because we are a um, couple of persons active. So, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe we, we actually, we will talk about a couple of uh, themes. Uh, but I'm going to again ask some questions um, and that would be to the whole group. Uh, what concerns you about networking uh, from the perspective of a graduating student or a early careerist or, a, or an emerging scholar? So what concerns you about networking or with networking? Or with networking? I can go. So I think one of the things um, as an academic or as a graduate student, um, and particularly as, I think as a female graduate student in particular, sometimes it's very difficult to feel like you belong in the space um, <laughs> when there's a lot of sort of, um, uh, of, of powerful voices in, in spaces. And so sometimes it's hard to um, know how to engage or to feel comfortable engaging um, in, in networking spaces. Um, and so, yeah, I think, you know, having uh, supervisors who kind of facilitate that or, um, or other mentors is really important. So, okay, we got that like gender could be a critical variable. Okay, anybody else to share? What concerns you about networking? I um, I will take what Bina said about being from the South and how to feel that the scholars that we are coming from the South have uh, a place or have a voice. Um, and I think that has to do because resources in the South are limited. Like I can see how now that I am at the University of Regina, I have access to most to many many different uh, academic resources and all these articles that was just published this year you don't have that chance in the south right in ecuador i didn't have that chance to have them i know i knew that they were published but i didn't have access to the full article or the full book so one of the challenges that i really have is that i feel that i don't have the same resources as the those powerful voices as amanda was, was saying before because I don't feel I, I have the same level of knowledge or that I don't have a, a voice that is helpful or could be interesting and that kind of things. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? What concerns you? Yeah, I think for me, one of the big challenges is just the time commitment because it's it can be challenging as a PhD student to you know balance all these multiple responsibilities at the same time. Um, I'm still finishing courses, but also like teaching assistant and research assistant positions, and then wanting to get more involved with something like CARFUMS, but not really feeling like I have the time to do that, or that if I took it on, it would just be uh, kind of leading to burnout if I uh, try to take on too many things. So that's certainly my biggest challenge at the moment. Thank you. Uh, so. Anybody else uh, want to say anything uh, about it? Uh, well, just to follow Rachel's thought, um, I'm a pretty busy person. So um, due to economic reasons, in order to pay my tuitions, I need to hold on to my full-time position and I'm a manager. So if you see around here, I have two computers, one with my work, 
my office coming back here, the CEO is on holiday, so I have to take over. I have two TA positions uh, and one of them to um, uh, grade 304 essays, which is not a picnic, uh, and my two courses. So social life, zero. Uh, I don't mind because I'm a pretty, you know, I could be extroverted, but I like my own space. Um, so this electronic uh, communication does help a lot. Uh, to minimize, you know, the time waste between one or the other, because before you, you just have to take the car, go to the office and then come back and go to the university. Now we can actually um, limit those barriers. So it does help to have these um, uh, ways of communication about video conferences. Thank you. Okay, so who, is, who, is, who hasn't spoken yet? Uh, if they want to share about concerns uh concerns about networking i think okay we can go to the next question um what is your hope uh, for networking what are you hoping um uh, yeah for networking or in relation to networking what is your aspiration uh, i will say to um encounter people who are more knowledgeable than I am, and especially in my field of research so I can learn from, and or um, someone who is as passionate about what I want to research as the other person is. Thank you. Anybody else? Anything that comes to your mind, yeah. Anything. For me, it's emotional support, <laughs> like something, you know, someone that I can go and feel miserable and then just tell me that everything is going to be well, okay, because as, as Rachel was saying, as, as Walter was saying, and I'm sure Amanda went through this as well, it's like you feel very lonely, but also you need someone that just tells you that it's going to be okay and it has to be and in my case i would prefer it if it is someone that is um an uh, emerging scholar in the sense that is living the same things that i am living and that we can share our pain and suffer <laughs> anybody else yes please yes and so i think uh, for me um I haven't been doing networking over the last few. I mean, networking, if you we just if we just mention mingling in this particular way. Although for me, the definition of networking is very different, as I was saying before. But in this sense, uh, it is now again it has become a bit more important for me because uh, uh, I want to learn from emerging scholars uh, that what are the new theoretical approaches, new exciting lens through which they are uh, studying things. And that always, I'm learning always so much from uh, those who have started and those are doing their PhDs as well. So this is something incredibly important. And second, uh, you know, um, uh, being a person of color in academia, uh, a, a woman, it's very, it is not at all easy. It is not at all easy. So that kind of networking where I saw as an early career um, um, female academic, the kind of support I wa wanted and needed. Uh, as a senior person, it had become pretty isolating because I am, I am the first female person of color to be a professor in my department in the 75 years of history. So you can imagine, I'm on my own. So I don't know. So, you know, and then now I'm alone there as well. And there's all sorts of expectation as a professor what you have to do. So it is actually always important to have connections, to have a community. So for that, I think it's very important for me. Can, can I ask you something, Bina? Uh, sure. When you, when you mentioned that, uh, because I, I, I did have, I mean, feelings are feelings. And, and when you, you get the sense of uh, the ostracism you know, within your field or even at work. So uh, I was, uh, I, I'm the only, I will say, 
not uh, English as a first language um, PhD student in my department. Yeah. And I did care a lot about that, but I noticed that in the end, nobody cared. It was all in my head. So I, I, want, to, I, I, I want to know how that came across from you. It was something that you, your gut uh, felt or it was actually directed, a conversation or something or experience from your colleagues because it's quite interesting. I'm intrigued because I, I, I do have those thoughts sometimes. There's a lot of research on this, Walter, globally mm -hmm. on academic sector. So what I'm saying, I, and of course, we always have to trust our own gut about what's happening mm -hmm. around us. Agree. But what I'm saying, it's not actually, it's my own views and thoughts. There's so much incredible amount of research on it about inclusion and diversity and equality and what it means in academic sector. And that's a, a system is built on inequality when who is citing whom, so citational politics. Agreed. How journals, publication, gatekeeping, who is having jobs where. So yeah, of course. So of course it's a feeling and um, as, a, as an early career academic and emerging scholar, I was not able to recognize those. It took, took me two decades to learn to recognize those. Uh, but you can, I'm sure in the Canadian context, there's a lot of work, what indigenous researchers, other women of color could tell you about it. Better maybe to think about other colleagues, colleagues could perhaps say about this more than I could. Wow, thank you. Okay, anybody else wants to say something about um, your hopes or aspirations? What are you aspiring for networking, effective networking, successful networking? Um, yeah, Any, so, anybody else who hasn't spoken? Think, yes, please. I think for myself um, that it's really to create a community of people who are doing similar research to myself, but also to sort of take me out of the department um, a little bit because I find particularly when you're interacting with your own cohort all the time, um, it's very, things are very competitive. You're all, you know, working for the same awards or the same like research assistantships and like there's, it feels competitive and not necessarily in a good way. And so when you take that little piece of it away and, and are able to interact with your peers in different arenas or with, um, you know, scholars who have been working in the field for a lot longer, it, gives you more of a sense of community than a sense of, of you know, sort of stress and, uh, and yeah, competition, I think. Wow, thank you. Is there anybody missing? Uh, want to say something about the hopes or aspirations? Maybe a next question would be uh, about the uh, obstacles or barriers uh, for effective networking, uh, yeah. We, we, uh, we have covered couples, yeah, but still, if you have something to add, um, we got gender, we got country of origin, we got the access to inter uh, kind of like resources. Uh, I think also workload um, that I understand from the, if I'm correct, um, and then time management, like time, uh, time also a big factor, emotional support. Um, so mental health is there and, and and of course, another one big thing is intersectionality. Like if you are a female and then you are a person of color. Um, so all these these barriers, challenges are there. Still, you want to say something about uh, other than this, uh, any other challenges or any other uh, barriers or obstacles, constraints? So in, in, in like, what do we mean by networking? We already knew. Okay, so that is networking. Now we want Money. To, yeah. See, uh, Okay. <laughs> I work for a non for profit and I haven't had a raise in three years. So that's why. Yeah, I would love to focus on my research 100%. I actually got a scholarship for 54K and I have to, I have to reject it because on the small print says the holder of this award or something, I'm paraphrasing, uh, should not be working full time. And it was either give up on my full-time job, which I have the health benefits in retirement, 
for something that may or may not work. So money and also the assumption, because giving me that award, it assumes that, I, I don't know, I'm 53 years old. Do you think that I live with my parents and they pay the rent or someone? I still, you can't manage to live with that money. And that was for two years, 54K divided by two. So <laughs> I should not be eating for two years <laughs> in order to pay my, my studies. So financing, Sorry. okay. So that could be another big uh, factor, yeah. Uh, livelihood or livelihood, yeah. So good. Any Anybody else wants to say something? Yeah. Yes, I think I think the pandemic and the transition to all this online stuff has been positive, but also challenging for networking. So it's been positive in the sense that there are a lot more um, like webinars and online events and online conferences, which makes it sometimes easier to actually participate in these kinds of things um, and to meet people who are outside of your little your university or your geographic um, area. Um, but it also means you miss out on some of the um, you know, interactions on campus or with other people um, in person that might happen at in-person conferences or in-person events. Um, I know I'm only on campus like one day a week at the moment. And so a lot of other people I think are in similar situations as we kind of slowly transition back to more in-person. Um, Thank you. Okay, so uh, actually the, the, the next question uh, would be around the, the, the next um, what we can do. Uh, we had actually planned, but I'm cognizant of the time, uh, uh, plan to do a breakout on research, your research interests or areas, but uh, I think um, uh, we may not have time. But uh, so the next question would be, as an organization, um, what we can do um, then as student bodies within that or student committees or student associations, what we can do and as established scholar, what we can do. So this will be coming from your, uh, uh, from you. Uh, so my next question is actually around that. What we can do as car firms, student committees of the professional association or student bodies as established or senior scholars uh, to expand our networking. So what are your recommendations or suggestions? Yes, please. So I just want to say that there is a vacant position at CARFEM for a student, office, uh, student affairs officer. Okay, yeah. Wow. Okay. okay. No, no, but I think that's a good, good question. And also what you, you can do at your university uh, department, but also, I mean, how, how to make things maybe uh, useful for you uh, at, at CARFEM. Okay, so can I have more responses each from each of you, please try, try uh, to give a recommendation or suggestion or, yeah. Yeah, so before the pandemic, ah. I was involved um, with the um, Migration and Diaspora Studies Initiative at Carleton, and we organized two like in-person um, student research conferences. And we like, they were on hold because of the pandemic, but I was reaching out to the group chat this morning and it seems like there's interest in restarting those conferences in like 2022 so hoping to restart those um i don't know what that will look like whether that'll be online or hybrid or in person or whether there would be a potential connection to carfums or not or whether it would be just kind of carlton and area but before we had people coming from quebec and ontario um coming to these conferences um beyond just forced migration, but migration in general. And I think those kinds of opportunities are really cool, especially for students um, who might not come to, you know, a conference that's mostly more senior academics. So you mean like organize online events? Organize online events for, yeah, okay. So there's the idea, am I right? For, or we can organize events for networking or on specific to networking. That is your suggestion, am I right? If I get you correctly? I mean, it's more about, well, yes, events for networking, but also opportunities for students to present their research. I mean, I know CARFUMS oh. is already doing the CARFUMS meets sessions, oh, okay. which are really, that's a really cool idea. Okay. Um, continuing yeah, that would be great. Thank you so much. Okay, specifically for students, yeah. Okay, anybody else to say so anything? I had I had a similar thought as well, um, that perhaps it might be interesting to do um, 
uh, student graduate student only panels at CARFEMS or something similar where it would be students who are presenting and then maybe an established scholar who acts as a discussant or a respondent um, on those papers. Um, because I think sometimes it can be very intimidating for emerging scholars to present on the same panels as uh, well established scholars. Um, I know myself, I, I attended a conference um, a few years ago um, while I was doing my master's and it was terrifying <laughs> because I was on this panel with uh, two very well known scholars in, in the field um, and the you know, not only was that intimidating, but then the question and question period, it was all directed to their papers. So then you kind of sit there and you're like, well, you know, what am I getting out of this? And so it's having an opportunity to um, have your work specifically engaged with as a student, I think is really important wow. in these larger forums. Anybody else to say anything about what can we do? How can we move I, forward? I do, I do stand uh, right beside Amanda on this. It's like, you know, you feel that it's unbalanced and unfair at the same time. But I did have the opportunity to share um, just, uh, it was addressed by the chair of the department. So they said, okay, let's have all graduate students together, just a gathering. And we start discussing the papers and we have much more in common that anything that, you know, tears apart. Um, so every, I don't know, quarterly, we have those uh, meetings with a chair who just digresses and kind of facilitates those meetings, but we actually present or just converse regarding our research. Um, and I, we did have a couple of students who were undergrads and just invited by the chair, they were brilliant. So sometimes, you know, I, I agree with you, you know, sometimes you have scholars and someone who actually published a paper and someone who is just emerging from as an undergraduate um, or master's. And some of those papers were just, they said, you know, th these folks are gonna go far beyond their limits. So I think the chairs of the department have key roles here, yeah. Wow, yeah. Thank you. Yes, and I please. think it's useful to connect across universities because, I mean, I know we're kind of lucky at Carleton in that there are quite a few people doing migration and refugee issues. Um, but if you're at a smaller university across Canada or wherever else, um, you might be, you know, one of only a couple of people doing migration stuff. And so especially for those people, I feel like it's helpful to have opportunities to connect across universities. Wow, thank you. Any other tips or suggestions? Yeah, we have eight minutes to go. So uh, I think uh, we, we can hear one or two responses. If not, then I can go to the closing reflection before I hand over to Bina for, for, for closing and thanks. Yeah, thank you, notes. yeah. So, so I think, yeah, uh, maybe uh, Dr. Costa will summarize, uh, but before that, I, I may ask you a few questions, questions again for a closing uh, reflection. Um, so what uh, were key parts of the conversation uh, for, for you, like um, today's conversation for you? What are the key parts of the workshops uh, or conversation, this conversation for you? Just one word, no, no detailed response, just one or two words. No, no description, no sentence, just word. Connect. Connect, yes, please, like this, yeah. One or two words, yeah. So connection or connect, yeah, that's one thing, yeah. Support. Support, good. Any other, like, key part of the conversation or what do you have heard from the conversation? What do you recall from the conversation? Uh, just in one word or two words like this, like we, we had two words. Pardon, the last one? Similar experiences. Similar experiences, yes. Similar experiences. Yes, okay, similar experiences, good. Any Anybody else? Everybody has to say at least one or two words. Just like, yeah, what do you recall? What what comes to your mind when you think of the to today's conversation for the whole whole 
conversation as of now? Uh, I would say sharing. Sharing. Okay. okay. There is no right or wrong answers, by the way. Okay. So sharing. Yeah. So who hasn't spoken yet? Community. Community. Okay. I guess I also have just a, a general question. Maybe Bruno would know the answer. Do we know um, like what time of year or where the next Carfums conference will be? Uh, no, we don't know yet. Um, uh, traditionally, at Carfums conference, we have um, announced uh, who is the next organizer at the um, uh, last plenary. Uh, nobody has come to me to say, hey, I want to organize the next conference. Um, so. <laughs> Yeah, it's not going to happen Maybe, today, yeah. unfortunately. But hopefully, uh, with the um, you know next uh, executive committee, uh, next president, etc., uh, you'll have people uh, volunteering. Okay, so for so, the next question, sorry, no answer yet. Yeah. No worry. Yeah, uh, for next question, maybe I'm expecting three responses at least. Uh, what were some perspectives that were comforting? Or what are the some thoughts that were comforting, some ideas that were comforting you? Like, yeah, anything, like again, no description, word, or uh, just one word or two words. You are, you are, yeah, you are feeling that you are comforting with, um, uh, impactful, or yeah, something like that. Can, can you rephrase that in different ways? So anything that it makes me yeah. feel comfortable? Yeah, or it's, yeah feeling good, well, stimulating. Um, within my research? No, no, from the conversation. Okay, Whatever we the, talked about in this conversation. Yeah, well, the fact that this is the same as the pandemic, right? If we are all miserable and we can share the same misery, we don't feel so bad in, that you're not the only one. Like, you know, by, by having and venting the struggles from others, like, you know, when Dina uh, shared her personal feelings, I automatically kind of, you know, um, bonded there because it's so those feelings that we can share so that's good enough i mean you know it gives you that sense of relief okay thank you uh what are some of the perspectives that we shared or that you heard are challenging or concerning or troubling anything that comes to your mind in one word or two words in one word or two that there are a lot of barriers to participating in networking, um, particularly for graduate students. Barriers for students and yeah, okay. Any anybody else to say one more response? Oh, okay, yes. Just in one word or two words. We have three minutes to go. Yeah, I think the la next question: is, What have you learned that is useful to you? One or two responses. Okay, volunteer. Just win one word or two words. Or what you will apply uh, uh, after you leave the session. One thing that you are taking from this conversation or you will apply in your life or... Well, I'm, I'm gonna borrow one, one of the um, folks, the peers that share the, the sharing experiences. Okay, yeah. thank you. Anyone, one more response? Um, I think, yeah, okay, please, please. Yeah, Bruno, please. And I would add to Walter's um, ID also sharing feelings. Sharing feelings, uh, thank you. And I, and I basically uh, re repeat what Walter said, yeah. but I think that it's one issue in the academia. We just share knowledge, etc. Uh, feelings is something that are no, no, please, let's not do that. Do that. Uh, but I think it's, it's uh, you know, it's important. We don't have to be, be married, but I think sharing a bit of feelings is not bad. Thank you. Now I would like to hand over to Dr. Costa for a closing remark or just thanking you. Yeah, all. Thank you. Thanks, Aziz. Um, uh, so um, in terms of uh, just like one minute, I think we have. So uh, what Bruno, you mentioned, I found it very interesting about sharing feelings. 
And I think this is something an organization like, sorry, this acronym is too difficult for me to pronounce. Carfems, <laughs> Car yeah. A mouthful. Anyway, this, um, you know, people, uh, those of us who are working in forced migration, in displacement, looking at vulnerabilities from so many different ways, we actually have added responsibility to think, share um, experiences, to take networking ser seriously, not because of the sake of networking, but exactly what so many of you talked about, building a community. In our research, we're always telling people how local communities are important, thinking about knowledge. If we don't practice this ourselves, how on earth are we going to theorize about it, write about it? So I think it's very, very important. Um, yes, and uh, maybe you do already, Aziz, uh, yes. you have specific sections of uh, mentoring workshops, specific sections of writing workshops, boot camps, or other associations and conferences have them. So also learning from other places, associations that what works very well for graduate students. So instead of re reinventing the wheel, just also taking some of the best practices. Thanks, I'll finish. Thank you all for joining. Um, we are on time. And thank you, uh, pa pa Pauline, uh, yeah. for volunteering. And thank you to all participants for your time and valuable advice and suggestions and insights, thoughts. Thank you. We are so grateful to you. Hi, everyone. Thanks to you. Okay. Have a good afternoon. Okay, okay. thank you. Okay, bye.